To me, this is an example of why you should always be doing your best no matter what, because you don't know who's watching. And when I was performing stilts in Celebrate, you know, as I had said before, it was so meaningful to me because I had been auditioning over and over again. And I finally got this spot in this parade and I was really giving it my all. And I remember back then feeling a little jealous, a little envious sometimes of some of the dancers because they were doing the spot that I had originally wanted to be doing. I originally didn't set out to be a stilt walker. I wanted to be a dancer. And I would see sometimes people maybe phoning it in a little bit. They're doing the dance, they're smiling, but you just see that they're not connecting with the audience or they're not connecting with the other performers. And that was something that I always felt like maybe what I lacked in technique, I made up for in showmanship, so to speak. I worked really hard to be the best stilt walker that I could be since that was the opportunity I was being given. And I was learning tricks. You know, we had this section where we were allowed to freestyle and most of us were new stilt walkers. So we didn't, um, we couldn't do much at first, but I worked really hard to learn tricks that I could do during the freestyle section. Well, the way this particular show worked, we would parade out and stop three times along the parade route and do a 15 minute show. So we'd parade, stop, perform the show, parade, stop, perform the show, etc. I started to notice that every Sunday there was this couple that I would always see sitting in the same spot and they were so fun. They were just youthful and energetic and there were guest participation moments where we'd pull guests out and they would conga with us and this grown couple would partake in it all. They just looked so joyful. And I started to see them frequently. So I would always go up and high five them and, hey, welcome back. Good to see you again. One day I go and I high five them and they said to me, we love watching you. We sit here so we can watch you. You're our favorite one. You do so much more than everybody else. And that meant so much to me because I had worked so hard. And I remember calling my mom afterward and telling her what this nice couple said. So Time went on. I would see them watching the show here and there. Months probably went by. And then I was in the park in the evening one time for their Halloween event that they do. It's like a separate ticketed event. And as cast members, we can't even go for free. But we had friends in town from Seattle visiting, and they wanted to take their son. So we all got tickets, and we went this one night. And while we were in that night, I saw the couple who had also gotten tickets for that same night. And I saw them, he was dressed up as Mr. Incredible and she was dressed up as Tinkerbell. And I went, I think that's the couple that always watches my section. And I debated whether or not to say hi because part of me wanted to keep that professional distance and just kind of be this performer that they don't know. But I saw them a second time later in the night. So I said, you know what, I'm gonna go up and introduce myself. So I did, I went up and I was like, hey, I don't know if you recognize me without blue eyebrows, but I'm I'm Brittany, I, I do the stilts in the parade. and. They were like, oh my gosh, we love you. Can we have your email address? We have so many photos we want to send you. So they, we exchanged information. They sent me photos. Another several months go by. They come and watch me in the Christmas parade. We have become cordial friends at this point. One night, my family, we all meet up to go into uh, the cast member preview of World of Color. So whatever year that was that this opened, I want to say 2010 maybe, um, And we met up with these new friends of mine. Billy and Cherie are their names. And so my family and Billy and Cherie were all in at this cast member preview to watch the world of color. And he starts asking my brothers and I questions about ourselves and what we want to do, what our goals are. I'm talking about acting. And my brother Stefan says, you know, I really want to produce and direct films. And Billy goes, oh, that's what I do. I'm a director. And I remember kind of thinking to myself, (laughs) cool. Like, what does he direct? You know, the student films, good for you. And then he goes, have you ever heard of Sons of Anarchy? Huh. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, exactly. And we go, love that show. Yeah. So he was one of the directors of Sons of Anarchy and The Walking Dead. Oh. <laughs> and yes, yes, a huge freaking director in TV. And um, I had just, unbeknownst to me, I had been friends with this guy and his wonderful wife, who is now a director as well, for... A year at least, and you I had never no idea even what knew they it. Did. Like, no never idea. even knew it. And so, long story short, Billy ended up getting me my first ever audition for a co-star on um, uh, Torchwood. 
Torchwood okay. Miracle Day, which was on Stars. It was a spinoff of uh, Doctor Who. Hmm. And um, I didn't have an agent. I didn't even know how to read a call sheet the day I, I, I booked it. I read for one part, booked a different part. And I showed up to the set completely green, no idea what I was doing. Uh, there was an actor named Jonathan Spencer who had also booked the same episode. He's one of those working actors that just does stuff all the time. He was so kind to me because I held up my call sheet. We're in the shuttle heading from base camp to set. And I don't know what anything means. I don't know what like SWF, for anyone listening that doesn't know, start, work, finish is what that means. It's basically like a call sheet is the guide that tells everybody what you're shooting that day, who's shooting, you know, what what pages, what scenes we're doing. And it's just your little, I don't know, how would you describe it? It's like the information page. I, I just found out what an SWF was. To oh, there you go. Yeah. So like next to each actor's name. I, 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 know, I know generally what you're talking about. I, <laughs> I didn't know the, but uh, but yeah, I can see if you had like zero idea I of any of that. I had like a professional. Yeah, the hieroglyphics, like. That's exactly what I said. That's exactly the word I used. It was like reading hieroglyphics. I was like, I don't know what any of this means. And I feel like Jonathan could have so easily been like, who let this nobody onto this set? She doesn't even know how to read a call sheet. How did she get here? I've been doing this for years. I've worked my butt off. You know, knowing now, since then, I've done thousands of auditions and booked a small handful of network roles, which is honestly more than most of my friends who are all auditioning as much, if not more than I am. So looking back on that moment, um, I have such a new perspective on that whole that whole entire thing. And, and Jonathan, he was so gracious. Um, he also was very sweet because he had been in the game for a while. And I remember he said to me that day, it was, he was like, no, it's kind, of, it's kind of cute that you don't know like what it is. It reminds me of my first time booking a co-star role, you know, my first booking. And I didn't really know where to go or what I was supposed to do either. And we do take those things for granted. And uh, man, I hope I one day get to the point where I'm just booking so much that I take it for granted every time. But um, I always think back to that story because I just know that if I had had a bad attitude about not getting to do the role I wanted in the parade, or if I hadn't worked as hard to make myself stand out in what I was doing. I don't know if I ever would have met Billy and Cherie. And, you know, I called them my Hollywood fairy godparents for a long time. Mm. They were so supportive. And um, my first three, oh, I've, I only have four uh, network roles. And they've, they've helped me get my auditions for the first three of the four of them. Honestly, getting my fourth one was really nice because I got it completely on my own. And so it kind of made me feel like um, any of that imposter syndrome I was feeling of like, well, I'm only getting these roles because Billy and Tree are helping me. I'm not actually talented. It kind of went away when I got this, this fourth one on my own. So 